Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the role podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ D Miles here. What up? What up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. DJ Never is MIA, but we love you, Nev. Never. Uh, love you, bro. I think he's back in Vegas. Yes, he is. But he'll be back in the podcast real soon. Yes, sir. Just take care of family shit. We miss you, brother. Uh, what's good, fellas? Man, back at it again. Baby. Yes, it's it June. It's June, baby. Crazy. It's June. It's, June. it's crazy. June. <laughs> it's June, and Vegas is open one hundred percent. It's so packed. It is. It's no so mask. Yeah, packed out. No here. mask. I was just at Cosmo picking up some shit. Yeah, at crossover. No mask. No mask. I'm Isn't the only weird? goofiest fucking wearing this fucking it, shit. It, it, the day parties. Have you? I don't know if you've been looking at Excess and Encore Beach Club. Whoa! Yeah. Funny Kassan you ask. And... Funny you bring this up, Kirk. We have our very own uh, here in pool guy. Oh yeah. Are you the pool guy? <laughs> he's a, he's I, was a pool a, I was out a little bit. I was yeah. out a little bit. I went by uh, daylight. Went by Encore Beach. Yeah. Also went by uh, Dre's. Oh, you was like, Dottie D was back Dottie at D it. was <laughs> out here, bro. Yo, we got to give a shout out to Franzen because Franzen is back home at yes. Dre's. He's Happy doing birthday. it up real big. Yeah. Happy birthday. He celebrated oh, yes. his Happy birthday, birthday belated. Yo, that dude, uh, I got to give it to him, man. Franzen. Stuck to his guns. He's been killing it, man. Yeah. I mean, a lot of DJs have been killing it. Everyone's been killing it. But Franzen, it, it felt really good to see him pause. Yeah. It felt good to pause. Well, no, that's not a pause. <laughs> good to see him, buddy. It felt good to see him. It oh, felt good frowns. to see him back at frowns. Dre's. And yeah, man. that's when I feel like Vegas felt kind of open. Yeah, yeah. That's and definitely then, the stamp. And they, that's got, the stamp. and they got Future back. You know, Future oh, yeah. was over there. <laughs> Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Future, Khalifa. Yeah. Uh, Future, Wiz Khalifa. They just announced Rick Ross. Oh, that shit. Yeah, that's yeah. a big deal, big deal. When I saw friends and post his flyer, I was like, okay, like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of dope to yeah. live. And I think again, he's you know streaming I mean? from that fucking yeah. uh, place too. Oh, he's really? DJing. Yeah, he has another computer. I think to the side where that's his uh, Twitch computer. Oh wow! Oh, that's smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I, I was actually having a convo, a really a brief convo with him because I went. I was I've been hanging out downtown. Uh-huh. I don't. It's been like yo downtown Vegas. Bubbling. Yeah. is like bubbling. It's like becoming. Really like Wynwood in Miami. Yeah, yeah. It's really like I can't. There's no other way for me to explain it, mm. except it's very similar. Because in Miami, you have South Beach, right? Right. You have everything that you have, like Live. You have Story. You have all these mega clubs there. Yeah. And that's kind of like the Las 11. Vegas Strip, right? Yeah. The equivalent like to that, everything yeah. on Collins Avenue. Yes. In Miami is pretty much the, the Las poppers, Vegas Strip, right? Mm-hmm. The big the athletes go there. The big hotels yeah. right on the beach, all that shit, right? Yes. Yeah. And then you have Wynwood, which is like in downtown Miami. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Arts District. Yeah. And then the Arts District, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's basically very similar to downtown Las Vegas. Yeah. Where there's also an Arts District, kind yeah. of. And then, yeah. but there's all these like kind of. These parties emerging, like all of these dope kind of parties, like yeah, yeah, like Cuffin down there, yeah, Cuffin yeah. with P Dot and uh, Beast thing, and then you have a uh, Snapback coming up, yeah. Snapback, and then you have the First Friday movement down there, yeah, as well. and then you have even Jewels with Hickeys and Dry Humps from yes, San Diego, yes. also every Wednesday, yeah, it's yeah, great. the biggest Filipino wedding <laughs> DJ, <laughs> the in number so- one, in SoCal, baby. the number one, the yeah. number one, the biggest at this. Yeah, point, I went right? downtown a couple of weeks ago to check out uh Disco Disco Pussy, yes, yeah. on a Thursday, yeah, popping. Yeah, popping, popping. I DJ that shit. That shit was line amazing. like line out the door at like eleven o'clock. But we're starting to see these. We're starting to see these theme parties actually work in downtown, right? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's Vegas. like reggaeton parties, right? Yeah. There's like a Latin yeah. party. Altura with uh, with uh, DJ yeah. Exile. Yep. There's like disco parties, mm-hmm. and I I'm, I heard there's gonna be like more house parties. I heard disco p- pussy is gonna turn into a house venue. That's dope. Which got, is dope. That fucking venue's fam, dope. They got Todd Terry booked there. Wow. So like Fuck. downtown isn't fucking around. Yeah. So like downtown Las Vegas is like emerging as like kind of, like kind of like the music scene. Yeah, you know, I saw like the good with music even, uh, scene. Chris Garcia, he's doing something down there. Yeah, yeah. The OG from Vegas, just in case people don't. Chris know. Chris Garcia yeah. is one of my favorite house DJs. My, yeah, he's man. my favorite house yeah. DJ. He, like, he used down. to run Dre's after hours. Yeah. yeah, like that was his thing, man. And the hip hop was just in the small room. He is. He's just a great. If you could, if you guys could see Chris Garcia, like he's one of. My favorite house DJs, yeah, locals, yeah. him and uh, Jason Lima. Yeah, Lima's one. Lima's nasty. Yeah, yeah. Lima's and and dude, I mean man. like real house DJs. No, yeah. real. Like these yeah. motherfuckers are doing shit. Yeah, and they're doing it like beautifully, and know? they love it. Like yeah. Lima don't care to play no hip hop ever. Like he is a nah, house nah. head. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Multiple these, yeah. CDJs. These are the guys yeah. that are like like mixing mixing songs, uh, house songs, like 64 bars or more. Yes, you know, not yeah. doing like eight bar to eight bar house song nah. blends. These guys are like doing shit. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember you took me to see uh, Chris Garcia at Dre's After Hours yeah. one night. 
That shit was incredible. He works. He yeah. no. Yeah. He and he's sweating. He's moving. He's breathing. He's he's doing. I all gotta that get those guys. Uh, I gotta get those on, guys on the podcast. Both of them. Chris Garcia. Yeah. Yeah, man. So wait, wait. How's it been? Your family's in town, right? Yeah, Dude. family's in town. I had a cousin, man, from from Inglewood. Uh, from Inglewood, and I had family <laughs> that moved out of Inglewood <laughs> to uh, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so both sides just came together. With my cousin. Why are you laughing, motherfucker? <laughs> he's he's from you see Inglewood. <laughs> nah. I was like, I nah, like, man. Straight, I feel like it was a little jab. Like, yeah, your LA people are here. <laughs> nah, man. My cousin, he uh, he graduated high school. I'm sorry, he graduated college this year yeah. from Southern University, and he also turned 21 last year. But because of COVID, obviously, we didn't get a chance to celebrate right. and do anything for him. So this was kind of like a. So he wanted to come to Rhino graduation so, yeah. slash his Rhino <laughs> debut. Grand Lux yeah. Cafe, bro. Nah, did, you, bro. Did, you, did you break his Rhino cherry? Had to. Yeah. Had to. He had a great time, but we went out too, man. We, uh, me and my older cousin and his wife, we took him out, got him drunk. Yeah. He might have threw up. You know, <laughs> nice. you get, get he might have. Nice. Got to get that out the way. You know, what I mean? deep, it was bro. it was dope, man. Did it he fall dope. in love in Rhino? Nah, I think he was just in, he was just a little. He might have been intimidated a little bit. It was oh, his first real? time. You know what I'm saying? Wait, he's from Atlanta and he's intimidated yeah, by he, Rhino. But he didn't grow up. His college years were spent in Louisiana, oh. so he really hasn't experienced like Magic City or none of that stuff in Atlanta either. But I feel like I feel like Atlanta strip clubs are very different from Vegas. Oh yeah, because it's Atlanta like that. Like Texas and Atlanta are very similar. It's mm-hmm. like a it's like a pole performance yeah. thing. It's called pole performance. It's like, a, it's like, it's like it's making a real it, art It's like the make it rain culture. It's, like. Yeah, it's about the make it rain culture. And then I think Vegas and Miami is different. Yeah. I feel Vegas and Miami is all about the lap dance. It's like more intimate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like know, yeah. the girls like are finessing you a little bit differently. Yeah, like the finesse Vegas. game is, is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Although I don't know anything about the Atlanta or down south. Same. I've only been to a strip club in Atlanta. I think I went to Magic City. I don't remember much. But it was really small. But they had amazing food, and I never got a chance to. When I was in Houston, I never went. To, I never got a chance to go to a strip club in Houston. So this is there's a stripper shortage in Vegas. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw you post that shit. <laughs> is it? How is that even possible? <laughs> that is not. There's a shortage. There's a workforce shortage or everywhere. Just in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get staff for anything. Maybe that was why it was kind of light when I was. Was in, it light? It was kind of light. <laughs> I'm saying it's there, yeah, there's a stripper shortage, yo. I walked in. It was Saturday night. I'm like thinking it was gonna be crazy, but it was just kind of light. It looked like a like a week. Day for us. That's for nuts. real. That's crazy. To Food was still good though. So yeah, yeah. I can't be mad at that. Because even on a weekday, that should be popping. It's a stripper yeah. short. You saw that billboard that I posted from Little Darlings. From Little Darlings. Uh, Shouts to Little D's. They said uh, stripper shortage now accepting uh, ugly girls. Wow. Yeah. But no, like, but <laughs> but little <laughs> but little darlings, little darlings is known for doing that shit with no, their, they, um, to, like trolling and shit. Yeah, they troll on yeah. their billboards because they did something with sanitizer, didn't they? Hand yeah, sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. also, they have a billboard right next to the freeway, like right. the 15th yeah, yeah, the main yeah, freeway yeah. for Vegas, and they're always posting trolling shit. Yeah, like they said, like now now accepting hand sanitizer or toilet paper for lap dances. Or yeah, some shit. hilarious. Yeah, they did. Damn. They were the ones that they did that drive through strip club thing. That they had, remember that shit? Really? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They 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 had that. Yeah, yeah, they did that. Yeah, there was Extra. like a little like cart and shit. I also yeah. want to say that the, uh, never mind. No, 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 forget it. I don't want to. I want to. <laughs> no, no, forget it. Uh, <laughs> yo, traffic's been crazy in Vegas, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, yo, great transition there, bro. No, no, traffic's been crazy. <laughs> no, it has mad traffic on the strip. Yo, super crazy. Let me give you guys a heads up. If you're coming from LA. On the weekend, leave on Friday at seven in the morning. Anything past ten, you're stuck there for six hours. Ten p.m. Yeah, no, ten a.m. Oh, because anything past ten a.m., you're stuck for at least six. When does seven it start hours. clearing up though? Like if they leave at seven p.m., eight p.m. Maybe yeah, maybe close. But even then, you're catching traffic in L.A., so it's kind of like yeah. at, at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. There's always traffic in L.A. No oh yeah. Way. That evening traffic just it, stacks it doesn't up. even matter. Especially going to towards the, the 15 freeway where you have to take the, the 15 to come to Vegas. That shit's always packed out. Wasn't there like a suicide or some shit? Like what was... What? I was actually stuck in that. <laughs> swear to God. What was going on with that? I went in... So my, my family... Why are you laughing about that <laughs> yeah, I'm shit? telling you, I'm a fucking disorder. Where I shouldn't Man, be laughing about no, no. laughing. My entire you. family was staying at the Venetian. So I picked them up. They wanted to grab liquor. So there's, there's a, a liquor, war, liquor world. It's at Town Square. So anyone that knows where Town Square is, it's on the south end of the strip. Yes. And uh, so I picked them up. We go, up, go over there. They get a bunch of champagne and wine and liquor. We hop back on the freeway right by Town Square to get onto the 15, 
and we literally are stuck there for about two and a half, almost three hours. No Whoa. way. It was fucking when was this? miserable, bro. It was Friday, Friday afternoon. Oh, shit. So at first we're like, did someone die on the freeway? Like, is this a really bad like accident? Like not moving, right? Yeah, like st- completely stuck. And keep it in mind, my grandmother's 80, 82 years old. She's in the car with me. It's 115 degrees out. My aunts are both in their 70s. So I'm feeling miserable for them because we're just in this hot ass car. My AC is like not even blowing hot, cool anymore. Oh, that's we're happened stuck, to me recently bro. too. So we're like, what the fuck is going on? See, but D act like he got a hoopty. This motherfucker <laughs> got a Range Rover. So I don't feel bad for him. Bro, you crying, but, bro? No, it was, it was not bad. But after a while, like, you, could, you, you, couldn't, even, you couldn't put on the family feud. on your. On, you, you got TVs and that shit. You know you got TV headrests in that Range Rover? Man. But it was just. You could have put, you could have put on some Steve music. Harvey and family feud on there. <laughs> What you think, Grandma? How many points are you gonna get for this answer? Man, <laughs> you know what we ended up doing? We ended up listening to like some podcasts and just vibing out to music. You should have put us on. You fuck, didn't put fuck, us on no, I did. I did. Wait, so there was a guy who was on. So my uncle calls. He, my uncle actually lives out here. He's a retired police officer. He calls us and he's like, "Yo, like, I think you guys are in the middle of this shit on the strip." So this dude on the Tropicana overpass on the 15 freeway okay. was threatening to jump off into the incoming cra- incoming traffic and kill himself. Oh shit! Yeah. So the pretty much they stopped traffic from both directions just God to like damn. i don't know if they was trying to negotiate with them like the swat came out like it was weird bro they was out, even even when the traffic cleared up the dude was still out there on the ledge my great my grandmother was so frustrated she was like yo if he want to die it's his choice at this point like, <laughs> this motherfucker holding up traffic for three yeah, hours i want to say that it is very <laughs> selfish though right <laughs> yeah she was like <laughs> and we were all like, yo, what kind of selfish person? Like, And then we had other family driving from L.A. out here that was stuck way back in like Barstow. I told you. Because it backed up that far for this fool. Yeah. it was. Ba- it's bad. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Might as well just fly in here, guys. We had all kind of bets on what kind of person it was. <laughs> oh, like what race? <laughs> what race? Well, what was the bet? We was like, possibly older white. Yeah. yeah. Possibly a Trump supporter. Okay. Um, See, possibly, I'm, I'm thinking different. Possibly religious, a religious like thing. So it's all um, white? It's all weird. variants of white people? Yeah. <laughs> what did you think, Craig? <laughs> if someone tells you, yo, someone's trying to jump off. I don't know. You know, maybe. I'm I, going with a drug addict. For but, sure. then I, but then I was like, okay, it's Vegas. So people lose their minds when they're gambling and lose all their money. Right, right. He might have lost his life savings and he's just like, let me end it. I don't um, know. For some reason, I picture a Latin dude and okay. like drunk. Uh-huh. Singing Vicente Fernandez songs <laughs> on the ledge. I'm not mad at you for thinking that. But what, what race was it? What race was I it? I never found out. <laughs> Let me find out. <laughs> <laughs> we never I found out. No, no, no. We gotta find. <laughs> we out. gotta find out. Get on the case. That's that's fucking crazy that he was really making bets with his grandmother yeah. about what race and how. They we were all in the car, just like, yo, man. It, it went from us being like really upset to being really <laughs> sad for this dude. Like we're Damn. like. Oh, here like, we go. Cricket's pulling this shit up. Yeah, like, yeah. No. it's so vague online. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't say it, nah, right? man. I feel like it's on purpose. Because they're just going to say, like, man attempted to. 40 plus yeah. year old man yeah. try to do this. But even, on the, even on even on live news. Like, Mexican man. It can't be like. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be like. <laughs> Mexican man like, from if they, Mexico. If this was L.A., they would have they gave you. Oh, no, L.A. is whole, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's it's fucked up. Crazy. But you know what, man? I I don't drive, so I really don't experience yeah. what you guys <laughs> experience. <laughs> Imagine if you would have been in your Uber, though. I, mean, I don't take stuck. the fifteen. I, I'm a local streets guy. Oh, you man. know what I'm saying? Like I, I will never tell an Uber driver, "Can you take the 15? I'll be like, yeah. "Take the local streets." Yeah, like, that's smart. Go behind the go, go behind the casinos. I'm yes. the I'm the go behind the casino motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I learned no. that from you. That's a good tip, actually. Yeah, pause. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> That's a good tip. Yeah, man. Um, okay, so fuck all this Las Vegas bullshit, mm-hmm. right? Jamie was at, like, the biggest birthday party. Oh. It, was private. It, was a, it was a private joint. It was a private joint. Look at his face. Look Exclusive. how happy he is. You know what Exclusivity. I mean? He's getting yeah, attention. Get to, it's exclusivity, huh? Attention's a drug, guys. <laughs> this is, like, annual for you, though. Ah, you know. It's annual for you. <laughs> so you were at Quincy's... 30th birthday party. 30th birthday. And Quincy oh, is Diddy's... Puff's oldest son. Oldest son. Via I'll Be Sure. Via I'll Be Sure. That's how you say it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, With was, Kim Porter? Yes. Rest in peace, Kim R. Porter. R.I.P. Yeah. Miss Kim. Uh, yeah, we, we... Well, he had his annual birthday dinner. No phones allowed? No, this is the birthday dinner. Too Short was there for some odd reason. At the dinner? <laughs> yeah, at the Uh-oh. dinner. So this is like those celebrity Hollywood birthday parties, right? Everyone shows up. The party, yes. 
There was, oh, there's a oh few, the dinner is private? The dinner's private. But two shorts friends. there. But two shorts there. Okay. I've never seen two short around. And then two short was like watching the game on his phone and shit. <laughs> it was kind of odd. I was just like, what the fuck is two short are, doing? Are two short and Quincy like. They, no, cool? no, I don't know that. So wait, 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 wait. Where, where, where was the dinner? The Can dinner you say? Was at, yeah, it was at Yamashiro. In Hollywood, it was mm-hmm. up in the fucking mountains. It was nice. So you Private ate a bunch world. of food. Oh yeah, you didn't even know I, what you was eating. No, I I actually got put. I was ordering cool shit because of you, the Wagyu A five. Oh yeah, I was. That's like, really yo that's man. The best. It wasn't on my fucking. You know, I wasn't paying for it, so I was ordering that shit. But <laughs> but yeah, I ordered that. God damn. It with the tomahawk steak. You mm. know what I mean? I was good. I was up there. I was eating pretty well. And you're nice. still in diet form. That was your cheat day? Yeah. No, well, that's protein, guys. I didn't yeah. eat no bread. And a lot of butter, too, though. No, Lean. No, I didn't, and a lot yeah. of cholesterol. <laughs> no, my shit was packed, salt. packed up. Yeah, yeah, hey, man, you got you to have a cheat day. Cheat. I got so, a shrimp and stuff like that. Yes. But then it was a birthday party, though. Yeah. That was a cool shit. Yeah. So who was there? Who was there? Gun name drop a little bit. <sighs> Chris Brown was there. Oh. Chris Brown was there. Yo, Chris Brown's mad cool guy. What were y'all doing? We were, were, we were smoking y'all's weed. Battling? Yeah, we did the, uh, we had the uh, the Scotty Pippen weed. Yeah. So who's DJing? Oh, we had oh DJs was dope. We had uh, DJ Livia, mm-hmm. which you guys know. Who's that? The little girl that DJs. She yeah she uh, she's uh DJ Livia. Yeah. With the glasses. Yes, her. I worked okay. some events with her for the, uh, Mayweather. Was her parents there? Yes. She Always. Was chaperone. Just pimp. Just pimping. <laughs> <laughs> Her, par- her no, parents. No, 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 no. Shout out to, shout to Olivia. It's always her, her parents Olivia. and her two and older brothers are always with her. Yeah, so yeah. DJ Olivia did her thing. And then DJ Charisma got on. Our fan favorite here. The yes, podcast. yes, yes. Shout out to love, her. Love Charisma. Love Charisma. She, she actually uh, told me to tell you, are you ready to manage her? Shit. <laughs> she Shit. said that. Take her to that next level, crook. I can't do anything. <laughs> Look, I, I can barely manage myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so DJ Charisma and DJ Stacks from New York. Oh yeah, shout out to Stacks. He, he's uh, also behind the the CJ record, the Whoop, the Whoop D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I guess he's his manager, uh, yeah, something like that. And he was um, what do you call it? He he DJs with Reach in, in New York. They have a dope party uh, at Tao uh-huh. pre pandemic. Hopefully yeah. it'll relaunch. But they they were they were they were killing it. Yeah. No, he, he's a great DJ. He's on Hot ninety seven too. Hot ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. He was playing some cool shit from New York. Yeah, Charisma was playing the West Coast bangers yeah. per usual. That's dope. Uh, yeah, it was a fun time, man. A lot of tequila was. Indulged. What was the big songs that you was hearing? Oh man, um, the one that I really liked was a uh, OGZ featuring the baby. OGZ. OGZ. He's from a uh, looked at a. He's from the Shoreline Mafia crew. Well, yeah. there's no Shoreline Mafia anymore, but he's the main dude. But it was him featuring uh, the baby, which is, I think it's called the fly shit. Oh, Get Fly? Get Fly. That shit was fucking popping in there, bro. Who played this? Charisma? Yeah. You gotta get fly just to listen to the shit. Got a brand new Glock, Scotty Pippen in the clip. But I ain't Scotty Pippen, I be pippin' on the bitch. You a sucker ass nigga, why you listen to the bitch? I be fuckin' with these hoes and I flip them on my clip. You be covering on these. Who's OGZ? OGZ's from Shoreline Mafia. He's the main character. He's like the Bobby Brown of Shoreline Mafia. Yeah, he was the Bobby Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican Bobby Brown. Oh, is that Mexican? Yeah, he's yeah. Mexican. 15 double O, what I spent on my kick. Got double O, seven tight guns in my crib. Made one wrong move, you get left in this bitch. And I put that on. Is there a chorus? That in my bitch. The Scotty Pippen part. That was the chorus? That was the chorus. Right here, he's been sitting. I put that on, got on my set in my bitch. You gotta get fly, just listen to the shit. Got a brand new Glock, Scotty Pippen in the clip. But I ain't Scotty Pippen, I be pivoting on a bitch. You a sucker ass nigga, why you listen to the bitch? Here comes the baby. Uh, slick pimpin' bitches one in slick pimpin'. I tell a bitch to swim, she gon' jump in How you get the money in the paper studios way back then How you do that, yeah. Call the box from the mailman The baby's on everything right now, yeah, bro Yeah, he's on fire, bro He's like the new Missy Elliott <laughs> <laughs> He's just on every fucking record Man That's a good That's a good one Bro, you No diss to OGZ, bro But you could tell, like, there's levels Like, the baby sounds so good on that shit Yeah that's crazy. Oh, that no dis- That was a disrespect. That was a disrespect <laughs> to my Mexican brother. Uh, Thanks, I'm gonna just. I'm just. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> not this. is not the depi- opinion. But what of is that flow? Else. What is that OGZ? Is that an LA flow? I think it was the Bay Area flow. You know what's crazy? I just had a conversation. I went to a. I went to their album release party for uh, the Blue, Bl- Blue Bucks Clan. Oh, they were there too. I think. Where? And um, this was out here. This was about a month ago. They had a, a album oh, release party. I heard party. about that. Yeah. So How I was went. that you. So you went to that? Yeah. How can you, you invite me up? Yeah. I wanted to go. Uh, nobody wanted to go. Remember, I was like, we should go. He was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to get shot up. 
<laughs> Wait, you said that? Jokingly. I don't remember I wasn't him. Joking. I don't. I know you wasn't joking. I know. I wasn't. But, but <laughs> son, I wasn't I was joking. joking. <laughs> but he. I don't and this was like this is when COVID was yeah, running COVID wild. COVID was still like it wasn't like, like COVID was wild. It yeah. was like like the December or January, yeah. right? So it was a minute. Ago. a month ago. That's what I was like. Wait, no, no, it was, about, it was probably two months ago. Nah, okay, two months ago. It was wild. Every shit was wild. <laughs> but anyway, so like not not to cut you off, but I was listening to the album. They got like a really good production, and I was Great checking production. out. I was checking out their like flow pattern. And then there was a bunch of DJs there, and I'm like, "Yo, where did this flow come from? Like, who started this kind of like, like it was like a like a off, not off beat, but it's like a little the timing of the beat and the flow was a little off, right? Right, right, right. And then I was like, "Damn, like who started this?" And we started talking. And I'm like, "Yo, was it T Grizzly?" And then my boy was like, "You know what? I think you're right because that's like some Detroit shit." And I was like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "Yo, I feel like T Grizzly kind of really put that flow to the mainstream, and it really translated into the West Coast, and because of it." You hear a lot of West Coast artists with that flow now, but is so, it is it like an E forty flow kind of though, a little bit? Maybe no, a, it's uh, too monotone to be an E forty. You were flow. talking about this song, Horace Grant, right? From yeah, Blue from Bucks Bruce, Clan. Yeah, play that's that. A, that's too. a dope record. They Blue play Bucks that. Clan. Blue, Blue Bucks, Bucks Clan. Don't yeah. I feel like these niggas soft niggas cupcakes. Whoa! I told her I don't want no pussy. Let me fuck face. No Damn. Last night was Prada down. Had a rough day. Down, My feet had never ever feel how no truck left. Big forms blocking all the neighbors' front gate. In the stool, I'm trying to see what bitches up late. Yeah, it sound like a T Grizzly flow. I'm right? jeweler, what's the update? What's the update? I can see from court side these niggas pun faking. Wouldn't believe what I paid for my watch. Wouldn't believe it. Can't believe what I paid for this watch. Can't believe it. Fifteen hundred dollars in this pot. In this soda. Put your lips on this cup, you bet not. Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, so wait, it's yeah, it does sound T like T Grizzly. But that's, that's, that's see, a Detroit I T, flow. I thought T Grizzly was from LA. That's crazy. No, yeah. I'm stupid, right? I mean, you ain't you're stupid. not stupid, but you just misinformed. But, but it was such an LA anthem that I thought yeah. he was from LA. Oh no, it was a big LA anthem. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it, I think it was more. It was just like that up come that come up dream and nightmare kind of feel. Yeah, first so day just, out. Yeah, yeah. But definitely that flow, man. So I guess so that's LA, more. Of a, so you're saying LA jacked that shit? I think they <laughs> took it and ran with it. <laughs> Anything to hate, huh? Anybody that could correct me, please chime in and DM us, please. But I think like LA definitely ran with that flow. But yeah. T Grizzly was the first one I remember that was rapping like that. Yeah. And I'll, he's I'll from Detroit. It. And you from LA. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the slack. Listen, when I hear LA motherfuckers <laughs> shit on their own city, yeah. I, glad, I don't even care if it's true. Yeah, what you say? Go or, ahead. Or, yeah. I don't yeah. care. I accept it. Because production wise, you know, obviously that kind of production has been good, you know, between Mustard and yeah, yeah. what Ty Dollar did. And, <clears throat> excuse me, like that, that kind of production's been around. But that flow. Is definitely something that for me has been like probably the last three four years. Yeah, very right? monotone. Yeah, yeah, and it's just a pattern, but it works, and they they're making good music off of it. And then another track that was popping off was called "Dog Food" by Forty Two Doug. At the oh, party. word. Yeah, Charisma was playing all this cool shit. Yeah, that Charisma's on it, right? She, oh. man, she's tapped in. She's yeah. playing all that. She she knows all that hood shit. All yeah. that shit. She was playing that shit, and I was just with the Shazam because I didn't know what was what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've been to a, a, a couple like. Uh, like hood, like hood hip hop parties in LA. Uh-huh. I, I gotta admit, like there's like thirty percent to, or forty percent of the songs. I don't even know what the fuck. But they everybody dropping. knows, yeah. but you. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's one of those moments where I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I was like, "Dog food." But yeah, that song, "Dog Food," was popping. Yeah, this is it. We don't miss. Forty two Doug. Forty two Doug's been having getting a lot of love. Yeah. I lost my nigga, that shit crazy. I mean, we just put him in the pavement. Hey, bro, yeah, I miss you more than 80s. Milligrams. Yeah, milligrams. Yeah. Bitch, I'm still a man. We slagging Rock Nation. Yeah, bitch, you jiggle who? And I'm pulled up. Everything's like 90, 99, 100 BPM shit. Yeah. Yeah. Custom work the rod, I had to send him home. I'm doing 45 a day, and that's on any phone. Dog food. Young get 50. We want oh, I have heard blue. this. Won't catch a I have nigga heard pass, this. Bitch, we all shoot. I mean, where have you heard this? Hey, I don't know. Where have you heard I probably this? heard it on like a, a like a satellite station mix show. The leakers were behind this kid a lot too. Oh yeah, the leakers on the border, nigga, send them through. We gonna get him gone. My favorite part. Come on, come on. <laughs> I wish I was in high school. When yeah. this came out. So I could be in the cafeteria and they serve me that lunch. Dude, like, dog, I'd be like, dog, dog food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not a bad record, though. No, that, yeah, she was playing all that cool shit. Yeah. yeah. It was fun, man. It was a good time. 
It was, nice. was that a, a disclosed location? Disclosed location, no phones really allowed, you uh-huh. know. It was cool, man. The do, Leon tequila. I, do people like Ciroc. wild out and have more fun that way? Yeah. Like when there's no phones? Yeah, because no you filming? feel more comfortable. Especially like those high celebrities. That's cool. Like it's Chris Brown. What were they doing? Like locking up the phones or some shit? Uh, I, I didn't... didn't <laughs> They didn't take my phone. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what they. He, I went through one entrance and everybody went. You got the, so many hiding places, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? So you had Other your phone. Little gut. Right. Yeah, I had my phone, but yeah, I don't know. They they most likely they locked their stuff up and stuff like so, that. So so for be real, were you, were you trying to holler at any celebrity shorties? Oh or man. Any any rich and famous shorties? I thought there was a few actresses and uh, models that I was around. Yeah. 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 And you, I was just having a good time, bro. Vibing. Drinking wine, you, you know got you I mean? got the gift of gab, you know. You know, I'm just make talking. the shorties laugh. Oh man, I think I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't Yo, would you tell. would you date a rich and famous shorty? Uh, how, you've never house, been in that situation. House, what? Well, yeah, give me a status like a Rihanna. Tough, Ooh, wait, wait. tough. Yeah, there's tough. levels. There's levels. Tough because Is I this feel misogynistic. Like, no, no, no. no, 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 no. Okay. Let me tell you why. Tough because I would feel like. She has a track record like Chris Brown, Drake, and then it's me. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, there's a big fall off there. But if she's a regular type of girl, then yeah, I'm cool with it. But like, oh, it's kind of hard, bro. It's it's a difficult task. Like a Kilani. I no, I could yeah, that's cool. Oh, you I can could, handle yeah, that. I can handle <laughs> oh my god! Zoom Trust in crook, Kehlani. Zoom in crooked's face. Why yeah. why can you handle Kalani? Because she's she's not. Well, you said rich and famous. Like she's she's rich. I mean, she's famous, but I don't know. If she's like rich, rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't know. The, you saying the, she's, she's not? Like a, she's, she's a notch. You gotta spiller. edit this out. You gotta edit this out <laughs> because you get. She got more money than you. She got more money than your whole family <laughs> for the past. Well, I don't know about for that. the past ten generations. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But yeah, yeah the last ten generations of your family. Maybe I only have ten generations of my family. I can't do that. <laughs> but I, I kind of I mean, understand. Going, let's go back to the Aztecs. No, nah. she's balling. She's balling <laughs> nah, from that. I man. don't know, bro. But I think I understand what Jamie's saying, rich, right? Yeah. Like he could probably walk down the street with Kalani, and a lot of people may not know who she is. Nah, you crazy. There's bro. no chance he's walking down the street with Rihanna, and nobody will know. Yeah, who she but is. you're crazy. You know nah, what I'm saying? You crazy, I think that's man. possible, Kalani? depending on where she. Yeah, Kalani's nah. popping, but she. Yeah, but there's a chance. But there's a chance I could get away from the bullshit. Yeah. It's you're crazy. It's kind of, it's difficult. She seemed like she might be a little more in tune with, like, maybe a little more grounded. And that's no disrespect to Rihanna. Like, Yo, all I want is all our podcast motherfuckers, please shit on this motherfucker for being like, <laughs> I can handle Kehlani. I can handle Kehlani. <laughs> she, she seems more regular than Rihanna. All right, yeah. so who, who's someone, so Rihanna, that it's either Kehlani or Rihanna. You couldn't handle Kehlani. I could. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> what a hater, B. You're such a hater. No, I mean, if, even D, uh, man, you would yeah. have to think about that. Oh, then. Yeah, no, oh, why sure. do you think we couldn't do uh, Kaylani I, regularly? I mean, you're not thinking about, like, the celebrity. There's honestly. Yeah. The celebrity's can, a lot. You can't go anywhere you want to go, right? right? You can't just be like, hey, let's go you have dinner. You can't just hang here. out. She's yeah. still going on vacations that you can't afford. Like, you can't meet her in San Tropez. You understand yeah. what I've I'm never saying? I've seen Kaylani at Sandra Pay. You don't yeah, know. Bro. I'm just saying, like, no, no, you, you can't me, meet her. No, you see you reach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, but all right. Even Kaylani should... be going to like Miami, Hawaii. I can do that. You can be. Yeah, <laughs> but can... you're going to have to borrow some money when you come back. No. <laughs> you have to be like crook and you hold me down no. for this rent coming up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I went to Miami to. And I didn't nah, want. Nah, yeah, nah, man. Nah. You'd have to like adjust your funds and you couldn't make it to everything. So, wait, do you think that would be the hardest thing is like. The celebrities matching, matching the financial energy. That well, would be she, the hardest part. Yeah, because she she's able to do certain things that you can't necessarily afford right. to a certain extent. Yeah. Like you may be able to catch up with the first like the first two months of shit. Yeah. And then you're broke. But then you're gonna be like, yo, like I need to I need to relax. Why can't we just stay in a little? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we cook? Can, can we, we cook? Just have Netflix and chill? <laughs> even then, the eating out, even the eating out. Yeah. You know, I don't know. From from I don't know. I just don't see it. Cause even I don't. She don't be out like that. I don't think so. Even when you're that type of celebrity, you're not really out. Really. I don't know, man. I'm more thinking of the relationship base. Like, yeah, I think. Also, I mean, like she, you, I don't know. I think there's a whole dynamic to that shit. That's yeah. why, like, regular, like a lot, of, a lot of like celebrities, they don't date regular motherfuckers because regular motherfuckers, 
they're in a different mentality than that. Maybe mm-hmm. they can't understand like, the like, same struggles. So if I want to go on, like, if I'm a celebrity and I want to go on vacation and money isn't an issue, mm-hmm. if I talk to you about something that's out of your financial, I don't know, what is it? Financial realm? Means. Yeah, means. Uh-huh. It's going to stress you out. Yeah. Right? Whereas, it, whereas to me, it's going to be like no stress at all. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, get, I mean, you're going very technical. What well, do you mean technical? I'm, I'm, I'm technical. going into this motherfucker. Just said I go deep, right? I'm yeah. going deep into the actual shit. Like, <laughs> if he, Pause, if she's bro, like, right? yo, if you, if you're with a celebrity, shorty, yeah, and she's like, um, she's like, what are you doing for like Fourth of July? And she's like, and you like, I got a DJ, right? Uh huh. She's like, I got to do a show in like Paris. Why don't you come? Yeah. And you're like, but I got to make my money. Just DJ for me. What are you making there? And I'll pay you that. Yeah. Would you be like cool? Yeah. Or would you be like? Uh, I don't know. You know I would, what I'm saying? I would be like, oh, word, that's dope. Yeah, that's a power dope. couple move. I yeah. would do it. He's Dottie D. <laughs> no, I'm doing it with him. I'm, I'm opening for him for whatever he's doing. You all for the opportunities, my, my, right? My only concern, I think, long term, if it were to get to that point, yeah. would be like, I still need to have a level of respect as a man, and you need to treat me a certain way. Like, you can't be emasculating me in front of your friends or like- Right. Or throwing it you know to your face. My, my, my whole thing is that, right? <laughs> As soon as you accept that, right? Uh-huh. It gives her ammunition to fire back at you at any time. Yeah. Like I, and that's and, scary. And if you continue to accept those opportunities, uh-huh. yeah. Then you then she could be like, you know, you work for me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, D already knows that's gonna bother him. That's oh, why he that would drive me crazy. That yeah. shit wouldn't bother. If a girl me. ever came at me like that, it was like, yo, like you kind of work for me. Okay, like, this, this I don't know a, if I would have a comeback, but this is a story I heard. <laughs> this is a story? story I heard. Yeah. This is a story you heard. This is when Travis Scott had Upper Echelon, right? Uh huh. 2016, 15, yeah. All right. I don't know if this is true. Okay. Okay. Am I going to get in trouble for this? No. Oh, I no, no, no. <laughs> I know what you're about to do. Go ahead. I'm going to save you if you need saving. I'm trying to think if I'm going to get in trouble. I don't think I'm going to get in trouble. No, you're okay, not going to so, in trouble. Yeah, okay. So Travis Scott had Upper Echelon. Had, I think it's around the time when he had Upper Echelon, and maybe he he had uh, all these other songs that were starting to pop. Mama Sita, that, that era. It was when he was producing Rihanna's album, Anti. Mm-hmm. Oh, 2015. 2015. Yeah. And they were dating. Remember they were dating? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Travis Scott had a show in San Diego. Okay. And I heard, I was in San Diego. Okay. And it was at another club, but I heard he didn't show up. Uh Uh-huh. And I heard the reason he didn't show up is because Rihanna was like, like, we haven't seen each other. Mm -hmm. And I need to go to, I don't know, whatever. I need to go to. San Tropez. I need to go to Europe. Okay. Right? It's like fashion week. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Mm-hmm. Rihanna's like, yo, I need to go to, I, I got the private jet. Just come with me and let's spend some time together. And he's like, yo, I got a show in San Diego. And I think she kind of told him like, how much you getting at that show? And then he was like, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, are you really going to take that money for that show to not hang out with me? Right. And then he had to, he just had to cancel. Cause it well, it kind of played him out like do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's Rihanna. But that's bro. what I heard. But even still, that's Rihanna. It's like if he was getting twenty G's, right? Twenty G's ain't shit to Rihanna. No. Right. So to her, she's looking like the plane that I'm taking to Europe with my team. It costs more than costs more than twenty G's. Right. So you're gonna look me in my face and say you don't want to spend time with me because you want to make twenty G's. Right. So, yeah. where, so then, Rihanna, but, so then, what would you say? If a celebrity told you, like, you really not going to fly with me because you want to make 2500 this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what you going to say? I'm going to say something slick, like, yo, but I love this shit. No, <laughs> I'm going with you. What time are we leaving? So you're going to leave? I'm leaving. That's that's my girlfriend. So you're going you're gonna to cut out on the gig, and they're never going to yeah. hire you again. Yo, because being with Rihanna in Europe means it's going to make me more money. It's going, it's going to raise your profile? Yeah. See, so it wasn't for the love. It was for your profile. No, because... <laughs> you see this shit? That's fucked up. You see how you think? You're still thinking like a user, though. Uh, but that, that's the I'm tough thing. I'm thinking long-term. <laughs> I'm thinking strategically how this is going to work. Oh, man. I want to bring something up. I would have to I want to bring something up, but I can't. But you act like it's an easy decision. It's you wouldn't be... You wouldn't be... Like, you personally... 
you would have called your homies or you would have talked to us like, yo, what should I do? Yeah. I'm definitely calling you. You would have been like, what should I do? And you're probably going to tell me. So what would you tell D? D, if he, if Jamie calls you. Yeah. <laughs> yo, wait, wait, wait. yo, let's do this. <laughs> let's make this picture. <laughs> Jamie call. Pretend to call him. But no, no, no. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. D, you busy? You busy? <laughs> I just want Jamie yeah. to be like, yo, Rihanna. Yo, Rihanna. Hold on, let me do this. Rihanna. Yo, Rihanna. Yo, Riri. Um, <laughs> she tell me. What would you call her? Riri would be her. Oh, my baby. Oh, don't make me start thinking. Riri told me that I should go with her to Europe and just skip out my gig. Right. Oh, That's $2,500. At Best Friend. At be- He's getting $2,500 at Best Friend. <laughs> best Friend. friend. <laughs> oh, shit. And she told me that to go and with it's, her. It's Boy Choi's birthday at it's Best Boy Friend. Ch- yeah, now you have to feel. <laughs> Shout yeah, out to birthday too. <laughs> Yo, she's telling me to just skip out. What would you honestly tell him to do? Oh, fuck, man. I'd be like, "Yo, are you gonna lose that gig if you skip out? Is it a wrap, or are you gonna they gonna welcome you back and it's all good?" Boy, Choi's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Why you you see, it you're already conflicted right yeah. now. I love Roy. He's a nice guy. He's, He's my guy. He feeds you. Yeah, he feeds you. And, and I'm guessing Riri's going to like front your fee. Yeah. You know, no, I, no, no. I, you I, don't know about the we fee. Don't know. Yeah. Wait, I don't she know about that. She just literally, she told. That her time is worth more than what he's getting. Like, no, like are you time really. Together. Like, so you're saying that 20 grand is more important than spending time with me. Yeah. Like, yeah. you going to tell me that? <sighs> Man. What should I do? do you- <laughs> That's see on, on one end I want to be like yo any girl that loves you is gonna understand your passion and if you want to work and get your money and, and feed your soul for DJing go do that and y'all can always spend time together. I'm gonna ask you one question if you ask me that. Okay, I'm, now I'm calling you. Hey, Kirk. Yes. <laughs> go ahead. Let me skip it. I just told you what's good. My question to you would be this: go ahead. What would you regret more, not going with her, or never having that gig again? Not going with her. Then you go. That's yeah. simple as that. Easy. I'm a lover, though. Oh, shit. I'm a lover, though. You know how that goes. Knowing yeah. this situation would never fucking happen to you. <laughs> what you would you do? Know. You would go, right? If it ever does happen to me. You would go, right, D? <laughs> yeah. It what depends, you, it depends yeah. how she do? said it to you, though, right? I would go. Because you're if stubborn she, ass. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah, stubborn. Yeah. Like if she, if you're she sensitive. Like, you sensitive, too. I'm like, very like, sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very yeah. sensitive. So if she, like. I can see him be like, I don't really like how you saying that. Like, Yeah. You said what? This is my D voice. <laughs> That's your D voice. <laughs> I'm very, yeah, I'm very like in the presentation. The yeah. presentation helps me digest things. So if she came at me in a way where I felt like minis, like minuscule. Like he already like, stuttering. Like, <laughs> like if, I, if I felt like she was okay, like. Okay, but like, he would go. That's yeah, what he, he was trying go. to say. Would you go, Kurt? Huh? Would you go? You know, I'm really stupid. When it comes to things like this, <laughs> yes, you would stay my ass would be like, you know what? I gotta work. <laughs> I be, I would have, I would have been like, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, yo, this is my bread and butter. If you don't respect that, I actually have to work, and you want me like, I would never tell you to skip out on something. Yeah, that you you had your brand or name attached to. So if this is the type of relationship we gonna have, where you're gonna put me in a position where I have to choose my career. That may not look like it, it. Like it may look like it's shit. Like it may not be shit compared to yours. Right. But it's mine. Yeah. So if you if you don't value that shit about me, then I'd be like, I don't really know. I would tell her like, I don't really know like where this is gonna go because I'll make time for you. Right. But when you give me an ultimatum like that, and you start like weighing out your success over mine, then we're not really equals. So then yeah. like, do I work for you, or like you know what I'm saying? Like, who am I to you in that way? Maybe right. you should think about that in Europe. Yeah. And then hit me up when you come back. This is this motherfucker yeah. single. That's and then, why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? You understand what I'm saying? No yeah. wonder you alone. I was getting into it. You too. were really good. That, that was really good. Yo, you act like I she told was you really detailed, cute. detailed. <laughs> but I'm he saying like tell so good. <laughs> but I'm saying like tell it. I'm over here stuttering. This motherfucker just just laid it out in like yo, a fucking then I, you synopsis. Think about it, Europe. Thinking yeah. about it. I, I think the crazy. best part is like yo, like maybe you should call me after you get back from Europe and think about. And we could talk about it. Like I'll make time for that. Yeah, but like you know, like <laughs> I think that's... so. You did, did, is this the number one? Is this the shit. number one reason why celebrities date celebrities? Yeah, is this they just like communicating on a level that most people just don't understand? Yeah, man, it's it's Damn. the re- it's the reason why. Like if you if you were to blow up, right? Uh huh. And there's like all of this. Sh- Let's say you get like a gig in Dubai, mm-hmm. right? Maybe it's for like um, Formula One shit, right? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Or, or it could be for anything. Do you want to go there alone? 
No. You want to bring your homies? Right. Or Some people to your share girl? With. Yeah. Your family, whatever. That's when shit becomes, your, you have to give them a reason to go with you, right? It has right. to be like an entourage thing. So yeah. like when we go there, you have to handle, it's just one of those things where when you have the money to afford shit, you, there is no limit to what you want to feel comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So whatever is going to make you feel comfortable or happier, you're going to spend that money. Right. But yeah. not everybody lives that way. Yeah. Right? People put comfort last sometimes. Mm-hmm. They put their financial situation first over comfort. Yeah. So that's the difference. Do I make sense here? No, I don't know. It makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Sense. But, that's the, but that's the difference in shit. You know what I'm saying? So unless you're willing to pay for motherfuckers, you're in a situation to make motherfuckers feel like they ain't shit because yeah. they can't be with you. So if that's a per- significant other, right? Yeah. It's, it's now, just different. Maybe I'm being a little... I don't know what I'm being, but I'm just asking the question. Does this rule apply for us, like as men, when we're looking for somebody to date? What do you mean? Like, like if if all of us in this room... This is a DJ a, podcast, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're, all, we're all at a level of, of DJing where we're, you know what, like a, a, a little John level, a Calvin Harris level, right? Yeah. Do we necessarily look for that in a woman to like be on that level, or do we just kind of like more so go with what we like? I don't. I like, go for what I like. Clearly, you know what I'm saying. Like, do do dudes really care how much money women make? No. Nah. Or like, is it just it's when the roles are reversed? It's a little more like you kind of want a man to be stable. As a man, you might want to be stable to date a woman that's that high up high up too, right? I mean, I think everyone's different, right? Yeah. I think every everyone's roles are different. So it's like it's a hard question, man. But as a man, we're traditionally the provider. Do you feel like that when you date a girl? Nah. Does she have to be a certain certain like? Nah, I level? think I think um, I've dealt with both. Like, See, I, I've, I, I've I have, dealt with. I have a standard. You have a standard, mm-hmm. but it's a sanity standard. No, I think like she has to be this sane, right. yeah. and logical. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm this. Yeah. Like, so yeah, yeah. There's a thermometer and there's like bad shit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think we all have that one. Like bad shit crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then there's like logical insane. Mm-hmm. And yes. I think that's where I am at personally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the, and her financial status and her work, her career does not matter to you really. I mean, like, yo, I have a lot of homies in different financial statuses, right? Yeah. yeah. And some of them are, you know, like some of my friends who are, you know, are middle class, you know, working class people. Mm -hmm. They own their own homes. They, you know, like the way they handle their finances. Yeah. Like they're doing actually better than some of my other homies who are making more money. Oh, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for me, it's really about, you know, how people value shit and they're happier, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you have too much. You know, it's it's kind of like you lose sight of what's really important because you have yeah. so many distractions. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. when you have the money to go to Coachella every weekend and another event every weekend and another event every weekend. Right. And you're with somebody and it's all about these events and going out and traveling. Mm-hmm. It's like it's re- you really start to see what the relationship is when there's no events and you just are alone with that person. Yeah. And there's no money, there's no flaws, there's no traveling, there's no nothing. Yeah. Do I really connect with this person? Yeah. And I think that's kind of like, you know, I don't know. Like, I think that's... I think that's where that's the headspace I'm in. Yeah. Like, for me personally, like, I enjoy doing things. I enjoy traveling. Yeah. But it's those times where there's nothing to do, where it just has to be us, and we have to have good dialogue and enjoy each other's company. If that ain't popping, then I don't, nothing else really matters to me. That's the first thing I look for. Yeah. The dialogue, the hanging out, let's be friends first, da 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 da, and then do the other shit. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, but y'all are broke, so that's why y'all <laughs> do <doing> that. <laughs> <laughs> we broke hey, over here. I stretch my dollar out, man. That's what I'm saying. Stretch y'all are broke. That's why y'all look like at shit like that. <laughs> no, but if y'all were Offset, you know offset? what I'm saying, or Quavo, yeah, y'all would want something different. So, was there any other dope shit that you heard at at uh, Quincy's party? Oh yeah, uh, Quincy's favorite song because he kept playing this shit was Whiskey, uh Essence. Oh, it's a great song. It's a great record. He, was, yeah. he kept playing that shit back to back. He kept telling the DJ to rewind and bring it back. Afro beats worked really, really well in that room. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was fun. Uh, what's his name? DJ Stacks. He was playing a lot of that stuff. So. Were you hearing like the 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 go to the go to joints? joints? I mean the Joanna, the, Joanna, Davido, the, the if, if uh, fall fall. Uh, Burn a boy, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that record, man. It's you know, it's, it's funny. There was a thing on Twitter of like uh, everyone was complaining on Twitter, yeah, 
saying that uh, they tired of hearing like the go to obvious Afrobeat songs, right? Which would be like Burn a Boy, yeah, Afrobeat, Joanna, mm. uh, DeVito, If and Fall. They're like, yo, we, we, we don't want to hear that. Like this summer, like when shit opens up, we don't want to hear that shit. Like right. we tired of that. Okay. Like that shit is too obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of these DJs were like on Twitter confused. They're like, well, what do we play? Like, right. <laughs> Burna Boy got that new joint, Kilometer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously He's Essence, buzzing. yeah, Essence Whiskey would be another joint that they did. But then they started going on Twitter like, yo, we playing these joints and we're not getting no reaction. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> everyone's reacting to Joanna. And yeah. um, you know all the go all the, the played out shit, joints yeah. that everyone was complaining about, quote unquote played out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so they were just mad that they were listening to motherfuckers on Twitter. Yeah, and are it wasn't easy? working in the club. <laughs> and my whole thing was, why the fuck are you listening to motherfuckers on Twitter? Right. About yeah. this shit. Are these like working DJs themselves that are like doing all these comments? Oh, uh, who was complaining? Yeah. No, it was like regular ass motherfuckers. But I was wow. saying like, like regular motherfuckers, you know. Obviously, you gonna get tired of these songs when you at home mm -hmm. listening. Like you ain't gonna yeah. listen to this shit at home, right? And so, plus, if you're a diehard fan of that of that uh, genre of music, yeah, you, there's more to that. And so you're gonna be like, yo, like there's more to it. Why aren't you guys making your research on these better records, right? Than the standard, you know, yeah. for sure. But it really depends on like what kind of room you're in, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, it, it's just for me, it's like motherfuckers are still playing. When I ask you, like, what's the pop and soca music? Yeah. What you going to say? Like the obvious shit. Mm -hmm. Even though it's 15, I don't know, 10, 15 years old, you're going to say, yeah. right? Tempted to touch, and then, groupie, like and like, said, like, turn me on. Turn me on. And if yeah. you're at a club Palance. that's not a genre-specific venue, if you're at like an open format club, of course you're going to play the more obvious records to be relatable to the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Joanna, like you said. like That's the ice-breaking records, though. Yeah. Like those are like, let's see if it works. Oh, it doesn't work. Yeah, enough. and then you I can mean, maybe go deeper. I mean, deeper those are the sing-along records. It's the difference when you're trying to unite. If you're DJing a room and you're trying to unite people, mm -hmm. you're trying to unite like 600 people. To mm -hmm. enjoy the same music, right? From different yeah. backgrounds, different countries. Like, yeah. That's very easy. different from like <laughs> even a house party vibe right. when you got like 20 motherfuckers there. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's like one is very personal and like very individualistic and the other one is like you're pleasing the masses. Right. Yeah. I just thought it was really humorous that these DJs were like listening to like people on Twitter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know what the fuck y'all doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, y'all know how to tease new music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just about how you bring in new shit and, and whatnot. Like, I, I would everyone on Twitter is such is fucking haters, yo. Right. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of bullshit on the I mean But isn't that like kind of where we're at? Like a song that was bubbling that was had a crazy year two years ago is all of a sudden like they trying to make it obsolete. Like that's crazy. And like, that's still a big record. Like, but that's, it, but that's just a big the, record. But that's just the youth. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people on Twitter. They always want to be forward, right? Yeah. So they want to prove to motherfuckers that they forward by being like, yo, they want to they want to state what's played out. Yeah. You know? And these motherfuckers don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> so, like, don't listen to these motherfuckers. And you know, know what's crazy, too? They're kind of, like, they're, they're, they're kind of killing the streak of that song. Like, for example, like, um, uh, Tempted to Touch or whatever. That song, still, you can still play it to now. Of course. And... If somebody tells you, yo, stop playing, Joanna, if all, they're kind of cutting the legacy in half. And they're not I mean, they're not cutting the legacy in half. It's just like, yo. They're like, not letting it live on past. Like when everyone's screaming the song and dancing to the shit, your opinion doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm That's saying? True. <laughs> <laughs> you that know what true, I mean? Kurt. Yeah. That's really true. Like your opinion doesn't matter. Like I do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And probably half the dudes on Twitter that are saying these things haven't seen it live and like that in yeah. that environment to understand what oh those kind of records do. Yeah, you know because I mean? there was dude, there was DJs on Twitter that were like, I just play uh, Kilometer and Essence and the shit didn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Like, you know, like point proven. <laughs> but it's also like y'all got to drop the shit in a certain Properly. way to make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we, I feel like a lot of motherfuckers don't sell it. Like, you are the DJ. You have to sell. When you drop a new song, sometimes you have to fully commit to the new song. Yeah. Tease it. Well, just even get on the mic, bring yeah. it back, play it again. Say like, yo, this is the, you know, like, this is that new Burner Boy. This is my favorite shit. I'm going to bring this shit back. Ooh, I got to play it again. Bring it back. Bring yeah. out the horn. Make people notice the song a little bit more mm -hmm. and just sell it. And honestly, like, yo, a DJ could sell any song. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, if they sell it, they could sell, they could, the crowd will eat it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't know the shit. Especially with new music, because sometimes 
like you said, like as DJs, it's our job to be, <clears throat> excuse me, as DJs, it's our job to educate people on music. And if it's new yeah. and they don't know about it, like you said, we can be salesmen for about five minutes and really school them and be like, yo, this is the hot new shit. And also seeing the reaction of a crowd. That's that's honestly the biggest way to convince a, new, a person on new music mm-hmm. yeah. is when they see the crowd. Yep. So like, you know, stop listening to motherfuckers on Twitter. Yeah. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> and if we, can, if we can do that, sell that shit. Speaking of sell that shit, the Logan, the Logan Paul and Mayweather fight. <laughs> yeah, they sold that. They shit. sold that shit. That Great, was a hell dude. of a segue. You guys, you guys watch that shit? <laughs> yes, I watched the majority of it. On what? On recap? Yeah, like yeah. just like recap through Showtime and like I didn't, How I didn't did watch that it. Get live. on Showtime. Well, Mayweather. Yeah, that was all Mayweather, man. That's where he only fights. Because he's he's a Showtime legend. How much did he make from that? Uh, reports that I saw pre- prior to the fight were um, he was getting a ten million dollar purse. Uh, and that does not include ticket sales or pay per view sales. And then Logan Paul was getting 250k, and that's just base salary. So, 250k for Logan Paul. Yes, 10 million wow. for Mayweather. So wait, wait. I was hearing rumors that uh, Mayweather was making somewhere to 50 to 70 million. Yeah, that's definitely uh, after like percentages of uh, pay per view because I think pay per view was like a hundred dollars a household. So however many millions or thousands of people do that, plus the sales of the. Um, Streaming and hard ticket sales, so he could make yeah, he, but he could make s- that up. I also saw that uh, that Mayweather made thirty million before the fight, and I was wondering what, why, and how did he do that? Mm-hmm. And then he walked into the fight wearing an OnlyFans hat. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, endorsements. He had uh, every fucking endorsement yeah. on that shit, bro. Advertising shit dollars. Bananas. Yeah, I, I'm always I'm wondering why people get so pissed off about the fight. Mm-hmm. Like, there were a lot of people disappointed, right? They wanted to see Logan Paul get knocked out. Yeah. Well, the rules were very fucking vague, and a lot of shit was to favor Mayweather. Yeah, but Mayweather has never knocked out anybody, pretty yeah, much. He has, yeah. but it's been when? 14 years ago. The last person he knocked out was what, Ricky Hatton? Ricky Hatton in 2007, yeah. December. 2007. Don't ask, <laughs> don't ask yeah. me how I know yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just oh, saying, and I, and I remember because I remember that fight vaguely. Yeah. Uh, but, very, like, very good. he's been moving up in, like, weight classes, right? Slightly. Oh, he's been moving around yeah. here. Yeah, but as he moves up, and it's kind of like... Less um, power. It's kind of like Manny Pacquiao and even uh, Oscar De La Hoya. When they move up, they, they lose their power, mm-hmm. right? They get a little slower, yeah. Yeah. Or they, they they get slower, or they move faster. Well, if you're going up in weight, you're getting heavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. your speed slows okay, down. Okay, okay, okay. I was just saying, I thought they retained the speed, but... Like some some do it really. Power, it really right? depends on the boxer, man. Like sometimes gaining weight does give you more power. Most of the times, not. But usually, the speed is affected. Um, but but I feel like all these boxers who move up in weight, they mm-hmm. lose their power. Well, I think it's more fatigue. They they fatigue out because they're carrying extra weight, and that causes them to slow down and like lose power. Logan Paul. Yeah, he gassed out by the third round. Yeah, I thought he gassed out by the first round, the <laughs> second round. <laughs> well, it was the second round because in the first two rounds, Mayweather did not throw a punch. Yeah, and he was doing all this fucking shit. So you were telling me that the shit was set up, right? Or like it was? Uh, no, you weren't telling me that. Someone told me that Mayweather got paid not to knock yeah. Logan Paul out. I I believe that. Yeah, I don't I think that. you think he could knock Logan Paul out. Yes. Dude, yeah. he's oh, you showed me that video of him getting knocked yeah, out. Yeah, there's a video out there where it shows Mayweather throwing a a right hook over um an over a right hook, and it lands right on his temple of mm-hmm. Logan Paul, and Logan Paul kind of collapses on Mayweather, and Mayweather kind of like picks him up, like a lifts bit. him up. Yeah, because it's like weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> yes, he's trying to keep him alive. Yeah, he's trying to keep him alive. <laughs> yeah, and but the thing is, like, you can see his body kind of lose life a little bit. And he yeah. falls and on him. He went him. a little limp. Yeah. yeah. Pause. But that's that's, that's the thing about Mayweather. He knows where to hit you. Yeah. If you ever notice a Mayweather fight, he's always going for the gut. He's always throwing that jab to the gut because it's it's, it's affecting your. See, liver. I just see him doing. Whenever I see a Mayweather fight, the way he punches and boxes, uh-huh. it's all for points. Yeah. There's yeah. no. It's not like he's ever like I want to inflict damage yeah he's a tactician he's a yeah he's a technical fighter yeah right very defense he's a very defensive fighter that's why when he was logan paul was doing all the circus shit when he's throwing his punches he wasn't really touching me but there's like a there's a difference when i watch like a what sugar shane mosley right fight or who was the uh, guy who was like x oh um something h right oh i'm fucking lost the boxer used to have like an x shit i can't he looked like dmx 
Bernard Hopkins, right? He does not yeah. look like DMX, motherfucker. <laughs> Are you crazy? He just got the ball head. Yeah, and he's not even dark as him. Yeah. No, no, but I said he has the X. Yeah, yeah. but oh he was like he was almost a freak of nature. Yeah, he he was fighting up to he was like fifty three yeah, years old. But still he used to like he used to like go in there. Oh yeah, like he dude, was he, ready to brawl. No, he, he was an assault. Dude, didn't he knock yeah. out De La Hoya with a body shot? Yeah, yeah, he was he was nasty. No, he was in, right, but he was fighting up to like four years ago. Yeah, he's yeah. crazy. No, he's I a think, different. Animal. I think he knocked out De La Hoya when he was forty two. Yeah. yeah. But he was crazy. Yeah, he's, he's, a, different, he's a different. He's a different breed, man. Yeah, and then you you playing Mayweather, fucking light, not even the light heavyweight. And they, even like when I would talk to people, they're like, "Oh, he's so much bigger than Mayweather. He's gonna hurt him." I'm like, "You have no clue. No, bro. like there's no way he's gonna even touch Mayweather, let alone hurt him." If, and then his speed alone, what Mayweather has, his defense, and what he's seen in his life, there's no way he's gonna get a clean hit on Mayweather. Well, I, did you see the blackout? The blackout level when they turned the spaz on with yeah. the, with uh, <laughs> that, was the yeah. that was the first one. That was the first one. That was the first round. round. First round. Like yeah. he like I feel like his what is it, his corner coach? What do you call it? His trainer? Yeah. yeah. His corner trainer? Just his trainer. His okay. His, his, his head coach? trainer? Yeah. yeah his his trainer. <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> corner trainer. I don't know shit. Yeah. 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 Well, go ahead. His trainer. <laughs> trainer. His yeah. trainer. Yeah, his tra- <laughs> I feel like his trainer was like, We gotta send a message. Yeah. So in the first when round, when he roughed him up, yeah, 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 you gotta let him know that you, you we not playing, right? Yeah. And then he he turned on the spaz level, right? <laughs> the Vegeta, the yeah, Dragon he turned Ball on, like he went to blackout, yeah. like level blackout. <laughs> Did he land any punches on that? No, no. it was not so funny because all these memes came out today of that. Yeah. Like he was just swinging so wild. I knew I knew he was gonna do that because there was a. But big... that shit looked violent as fuck. It right? did. We... It looked like a bear. Like <laughs> fucking trying to around, grapple, like trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, like with a little possum. The amazing thing is he literally did. But yo, hit Mayweather anything. was like kind of moving all over the yeah. place. Yeah, because like, he was roughing him he up. He was getting roughed up, bro. Yeah, but he wasn't doing anything. He didn't damage. score a single point. Not even a single that point. And, but shit like that, would, you would you wouldn't understand how bad that wears you out. Yeah, yeah. that's why he gassed three minute out. Round, yeah, but that's why he got gassed out, right? Yeah. Fam, yeah, Logan Paul landed seventeen percent of his punches. Yeah, overall. So whatever you saw, he landed shit, and then Mayweather landed forty five percent of his punches. Yeah, one at one at every two. He threw less too, and he affected them more. Yeah, it's amazing. But that's what I'm saying. Like it was crazy. And then I seen a video. We spoke about this. There's a video of Logan Paul hitting the punching bag, and he was punching it like this. And then I was like, dude, if he goes in there trying to punch like that, he's gonna fuck himself up. <laughs> Cause you know <laughs> boxing a little, right? Yes. And that's what he did. That's when he said the blackout level. That's that's the little punches he, he was doing. Yeah. So when you see his form, right? How bad is it? It's, it's really bad. It's bro. really bad. He has no stands. He's he, not. He's not. He's not sitting. So here's my question with like training for boxing because mm. I don't know, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you call it? You know, a lot of it is repeat, repeat, repeat because when you're in a fight, everything has to be second nature, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because everything you learn, like I could be training for a year. And then I get in the ring and I forget everything because it's not second nature. Yeah. Well, there's that famous quote by Tyson: "You have a you have a game plan to get punched in the face." Yeah. Right. So that changes everything. So everything has to be a reflex. Is that what boxing is? Just it has to be a reflex it has and it has to be to repetition. Be repetition. Mm-hmm. So your body th- is reacts just a certain way. Naturally yeah. moving a certain way. Yeah. And right? I think a thing that's undervalued is like how you how you um when you get hit, you get emotional. And that emotion takes you out of your your discipline. Right. You know what I mean? So, like, for him, he probably got tapped. And he's like, ah, like, he starts going crazy with these little wild punches instead of, like, zoning in and being more disciplined. Yeah. Right. That's the, to me, that, I think that's really hard. Right. Okay, that's that's interesting. So, like, yeah, that's important. Because you're right. When you, when you do get hit, you have emotions. So, a couple of things can happen. You could be <laughs> scared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? You could be fearful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or you could be angry. Angry, yeah. yeah. Right? But the best emotion is if you're not hurt at all, you're indifferent, yeah, and you can focus on the fight. Yeah, the next punch. And the best fighters can get there mentally, where they like they get tapped, they get hit, maybe even get knocked down. But and you still have to really zone in even more, right? And be that technical guy because if you're not, if you lose form, these dudes are trained pretty much tr- trained assassins. Like they know where to hit you, how right, to hit right. you, and if you are out of your game mentally, you're you're done. Remember that Ruiz fight. The Mexican guy against uh fucking, Andy Ruiz, uh, yeah, against uh, and, uh Joshua. I don't remember what that. The Mexican guy that oh the, the fat dude with yeah. Snick, Snickers and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he still around? Yeah, he's still around. But the thing is, he is, still good? No, he lost the rematch against him, but he just won another fight against uh, yeah. Ariola. However, remember when he got knocked down 
and then he came back and then he fucking knocked the other guy down. Yeah. And the other guy started like laughing and like calm down. He's like, he became an actor. That's how his emotions ended up being like, he got hit and he didn't know how to act. So that's why he ended up just getting fucked up after that because he didn't know mm. how to react to it. Yeah. Opposed to the other guy, he got up and he started throwing hooks and stuff and he adjusted to the fight. So it's two different type of fighters. Yeah. One, one got ashamed. Mm-hmm. Right. Because he was the, the more cut up, Fucking. Yeah, Joshua looks like a freaking professional yeah. football player. Yeah. So, so and the other one yeah, looked right. like a, he was from. The so the, so so one of them got knocked off, knocked down. Yeah, which is really. And he felt he felt emasculated, so he he had to act even more, like tough and masculine, and mm-hmm. act like yo shit is all good. Yeah. And he was started becoming braggadocious and arrogant. Right. Remember when? Oh, have you ever seen a fighter when he gets punched and then yeah. he starts nodding no? Yeah. That's another thing. Like, no, so you're that, not touching me. You but might, like, you no, know, you're not hurting me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But it, does that mean he's actually getting hurt? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me every time a boxer gets hit and they're like, that ain't shit? Yeah. That actually means that, that he, hurt. He got t- he touched They're them. like psyching themselves out. Yeah, like, no, nah, he, so he ain't than, touching you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. So you have to lock in into those type of shit. It's, it's weird because it's like when you see, like, Tyson fight and you see motherfuckers get hit by Tyson... They they're so fucked up they they don't even have a reaction right <laughs> they're dazed bro like you they're understand dazed. what I'm saying yeah. like when Tyson hit you yeah it was different it was it was like your soul yeah like Tyson like just, your soul jumped out of your body and ran out the arena yeah. it was like crazy like when you saw no, like a Tyson hit it was like what the fuck just happened has anyone yeah. ever hit as hard as Tyson like that no right at that George I don't Foreman think so well I mean those two maybe the power but the speed behind it. Was what and the, separated and the, Tyson? The ferociousness, a lot. yeah. Right? Like, he was just a pit bull. No, like, he Tyson would get, was crazy. Tyson though. would get up under you because he's only about five ten. Most heavyweights are like six three, six four. So Tyson five. would almost get up under you. Like and he, just he, he looks like he's putting you. his yeah. whole body into. Yeah. That but the shit. thing, he was standing next to you. That yeah. was his technique. He'll stand next to you and punch you sideways, and you didn't know how to react because you're so bigger than mm. him. Yeah, man. So yeah, Tyson was yeah. another. Nah, I'd be knowing my boxing shit. So how pissed off are motherfuckers who know about boxing going to be after this conversation? Well, it's at this. Oh. I think I mean, we, do we sound like idiots? <laughs> no, talking about because he he lives with a boxing trainer, and I know boxing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay, which we gotta we gotta tell you how, like you know, and <laughs> real real thing. boxing people knew that this was just entertainment. Yeah, this is entertainment. This is exhibition. You know, that would be like yeah, but people were legit angry. Yeah, you know, what because I'm they wanted to see Floyd get fucked up. Imagine if they like, want to see Floyd get fucked. They want to see Logan get no, fucked up. They wanted to see Floyd because Floyd never lost. Yeah. Never lost. Imagine like if if Kobe were to play a celebrity one on one game against Drake, when you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Kobe. Like people would be like, "Oh shit, Drake might have a chance." I'm like what? It's Kobe. He has no chance. Yeah. And then they get mad when Kobe dominates him, and they're like, "Yo, he never had a chance anyway. It was entertainment." It's kind of the same shit. Same shit. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, this is where the future of boxing is going, right? Pretty much because yeah, Ocho Cinco like fighting somebody. Oh my right? god, yo, he almost got yeah, he fucking got, he Nate got Robinson. Tapped. He got tapped <laughs> nasty, <laughs> but he, he almost, snapped into it. No, no, yeah. you see, you see, he he got up. He, but he did that shit. You know when you get hit in your in your lip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you get hit though, right? Yeah. <laughs> like ooh, the funniest ooh. thing is when he got hit, he hopped back up and he put his arm up. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, good one." Like, good, good one. one. <laughs> but you gotta but he acknowledge was stunned, that shit, though. Right? He was stunned. You gotta acknowledge that because he shit. hit. He tried to hit him with a side hook. Was it side hook? Yeah. The, here's the thing. Like literally all his might. Before that, he flexed on the opponent. Oh, just single flex, and the opponent said, "Yeah, yeah, good flex." And he tapped his his uh, his mitt his, uh, his gloves. gloves his he mitts. Tapped, yeah, <laughs> mitts. He, his, he tapped, paws. <laughs> his paws. His paws. <laughs> he tapped the fucking glove, and two seconds later, he got knocked the fuck mm, down. Humble. Yeah. That shit will hum. Boxing will humble the fuck it's out of you. It's crazy, right? bro. I definitely think, going back to your, your uh, question, I think there's a market for this. It's like, entertaining. People this enjoy is the market. It. Yeah. Because it, the, it's like the, the, the one thing I liked about the Showtime version of this whole fiasco mm-hmm. was that they inserted real boxes in the middle of it right yeah mm-hmm. so there was actual real boxing matches mm-hmm. in the middle of everything yeah, yeah whereas like the thriller versions it's just all it's like no one who watches boxing wants to see justin bieber perform right do you understand what i'm like no one wants to see <laughs> yeah like bieber or like you know uh doja cat perform yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying They're like cool with amigos entrance 
I like this concept of inserting real fights around the celebrities. Right. But doing like celebrity, real, celebrity, real, celebrity, real. Yeah. yeah. That, I thought that was smart as well. I thought that's a good. You got both viewerships. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it then wasn't... also like you get a new viewership that wouldn't watch boxing, learning about actual, like boxing. watching real boxers and seeing like the difference. I mean, yeah. you've seen Mayweather, right? the best of all time. I think, yo, they just got to teach these boxers to be charismatic. Yeah. Right? They, they're just like kind of boring, bro. Yeah. Well, you're fighting for your life. <clears throat> yeah, it's, I know. You can the, fucking die in there. And the the, the best ones are right, like the the Muhammad Ali's, the George Foreman's, the Marvin Hagler's, Sugar Ray Leonard's. Those dudes are always charismatic and interview you, well. You know what I, Floyd, you know what Floyd. I think. You know what I think fucks up the boxing, the new boxers that I see now. And you could tell me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. They just seem like they're desperate. Oh, like, for, for for a bag, yes. Yeah. Like, they're just kind of like, and they just look like this might be my last chance to mm-hmm. box again. And that, it takes the fun out of it out. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Because I look at both of these dudes and I'm like, God damn, like. They don't really need the money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, like, it, it's like when they when like the, the retired athlete does Dancing with the Stars or something. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's worse. <laughs> and then they like, stay t- and then they show the boxer's family sometimes. Yeah, like this yeah. is his new wife. They just had a baby, and the, and the wife's just like, "Oh my god, look. <laughs> looking scared to death." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always hate that man. When I see like the family and they like holding the kid, the kids crying or something. Yeah, and the wife looks shook. I don't want to like, see oh, that shit. God. <laughs> You're taking the fun out of this shit, right? <laughs> yeah. I get emotional. I'm like, man, I don't want to see her. She don't want to see her husband getting knocked out. And the sad thing is, these motherfuckers are getting like maybe five five k to ten k, yeah. like per match. Like these 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 undercards. Oh, no, 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 they, they, they get they getting they, they get getting more. five close to six figures. Oh, yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah they get okay. they get some decent checks. Yeah, maybe the lowest you probably get. Okay, so like a, like a yeah. fight like a boxing match that I would see at Showtime that was in the middle of this Logan Paul Mayweather mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. What what is what are they getting? Probably the lowest fifty thousand. Probably the lowest 40, yeah. 50, 50,000. Yeah, if you got a lowest. if you got a decent record, you're probably making like eighty k. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they're making good money. So, the question is this I was wondering Because Logan Paul Was like in an interview And he was saying like You know they should be Paying the boxers more mm-hmm. Should they be paying The boxers more I don't think so I think they get Pretty handsome to be paid bro. Yeah so But like if a boxer Doesn't have the following mm-hmm. Right Or if they're not Bringing in ticket sales Yeah Should they be getting more No Absolutely No not. That's the real well, yeah. I mean yeah Because if gotta, you look at Like a Canelo Right What he makes He earned, he earned it Because he yeah. has the following And he has the tools As a fighter You know what I mean But mm-hmm. realistically It's because every time He fights the entire country Of Mexico Comes out to the fight Bro, And spends money About 10 years ago He was probably getting paid Like peanuts in Mexico yeah. He wasn't fighting in the States mm-hmm. His big His big His big uh, check Came from Mayweather But even prior to that He was fighting Like he fought He fought, he fought uh, Sugar Shane Mosley And he probably only made Eighty thousand, yeah. If that, and he was an undercard for for Floyd for a long time. Mm-hmm. So you have to build yourself to that. So you you be DJing the Showtime boxing joints, right? Yeah. Was it boxing after dark or what is what is that what? you do? <laughs> no, no, it's regular. It's no, real. It's, just, it's all the uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, isn't boxing after dark a real thing? No. Is it? Not no, the, no. the one I do is uh, premiere. Wait, 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 did I just make that shit up? <laughs> yeah, you fucking. I feel like I've heard of that. No, no, after dark. BT after dark. Yeah, no, that's, that's Showtime true. boxing after dark. I'm maybe, not crazy. Maybe in the 2000s, HBO probably had that shit. To be honest, now that I think about it, you might be right, Cook. You might be right. Why some porno come up here? Yeah, hmm. boxing after dark. But what is it? HBO? Right? Is that PBS? yeah? It's HBO. Yeah, it's yeah, HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like in the 2000s. Yeah, I remember that shit. Yeah. Um, 1996 <laughs> That's what I'm saying <laughs> Fuck I'm that's old That's what I'm saying I That's some old you're man right. You're like yeah That's some old man shit No no, no nah. I think you're right Cause my dad used to watch that shit That's what I, <laughs> Me and my dad That's my thing with my dad Boxing is a shit with my dad So that's what I'm saying Like yeah. when you brought it up I'm like I think Okay I'm sorry yeah, no, You do Showtime shit right? Yeah Showtime So there's <laughs> There's, <laughs> there's this called uh, Premier Boxing Champions Yeah Or okay, PBC okay. for short PBC So yeah. you see these Do you see So you see So what are you seeing You seeing the fighters That are potentially moving Moving forward, yes. uh, both. So you, there's like the uh, usually I do about five or six fights in a day. So the first two fights are usually four rounders. Those yeah. are like like just turn pro. They might have like a one and zero record or two and zero record, maybe four and zero, maybe two and two, whatever. So there's there's two four rounders. Then you have the um, title contenders that are the, probably the next two have established records, and this is their big chance to kind of like make a statement to show that they're 
a title contender. Usually between eight and ten yeah, rounds. So eight and ten you, rounds. So when you DJing, you're DJing like when the music that they come out to when mm-hmm. they yeah. walk into the ring, you playing that shit? I play that and then I play all the music in between the rounds. Intermission. And then when they do interviews, I'm playing music and then, you know, kind of like playing music in between fights and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I can't then, lie. Those are my f- when I have to cover for him, uh-huh. for fear of these shits, it's fucking fun. Yeah. Because I'm a fan, I'm just fucking geeking yeah, out. Yeah, it's fun. It's mad fun. And then the last two fights are usually the 12-rounder championship fights. Yeah. So the big name guys that have that hold belts, mm-hmm. it's usually for the belts or whatnot. And there's been some dope ones, man. Like some really, really good ones. The weird thing, the weirdest thing for me was when there was no fans. Because when something big happened, you just didn't hear anything. Right, right, right. It's like a dude would get knocked out, completely knocked out, and it would just be dead silent. Yeah. So now you're starting to see fans out, yeah, right? thank God. It makes th- it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, yeah. The last one I did in L.A., it was, uh, I want to say, maybe 50% capacity. And they had a... Uh, that movie's pretty small. You had, um, you know the guy, Nonito Donaire? Yeah. Donaire? He's a Filipino, uh, but he's huge in the Philippines. Yeah. He's like up there with Pacquiao as far as like uh, his popularity. So who's who's the next dude that's coming up? I mean, Who's the a next few. Ooh, I, love, no, I just want to hear the one. Arrow Spence Jr. For him, I, w- I would say, he, yeah, Spence is crazy. He's actually Spence fighting, is the he's one. fighting That's the Pacquiao, one. right? That's the one. He's fighting Pacquiao in August here in Vegas yeah. at the stadium. Yeah. But, yo, he's, he's fighting he's, Pacquiao. Pacquiao's like 50 years well, old, right? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They're grooming him to fight Canelo in about a year and a half or so. Yeah. So they got to prepare Isn't Canelo him. old, too? He's 30. No, 31. So 30. he's at his prime. He's yeah. at his prime, but they're going to put this guy. Who's the number one fighter right now? Canelo. Canelo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Canelo In all pound. weights. Like all weights. Biggest pound draw, pound. big like for pound, best pound fighter. Pound. Yeah. Canelo. He, and, he's, and he's fighting. He's trying to get out of his contract right now, but he's fighting the So top why the dogs. fuck is Manny Pacquiao fighting? Because of the money? I well, think he, just, still, I think he just loves it. Yeah, and I think he's, and still, he's still good. He just, he's still good. He just beat Thurman. Thurman was a top uh, contender and he, and to he, be And Pacquiao knocked him out. Yeah. How old is Pacquiao? He Same age as Mayweather, to... probably like 43, 44. Yeah. Isn't that weird, though? Like, isn't it weird it's a that they still... to he, how he takes care of his body. Because the, the dude I was just talking about, Nonito Donaire, he's 38. And he knocked out a dude that was like 23 and looked amazing doing it. Don't you think it's also a testament to like uh, like the education of health and technology now? He actually right? said that in his post-interview. He said, yeah. the way I take care of my body, um, that that's everything. And for a boxer, a boxer, it is everything. Like how you take care of your body. Right. Well, any athlete yeah. now, even uh, I heard that uh, I think LeBron spends about two point four million dollars on his body every year, mm-hmm. just to and anything to fix it to nutrition and, and shit like that. Did that help him in the playoffs? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> Great, fire. you on fire today. <laughs> Both the Knicks and the Lakers are out. Don't maybe drop some tea, Grizzly. Man, <laughs> what happened no. to the Lakers? First day out. First day out. Lakers. <laughs> First round out. What happened to the Knicks? That's a perfect name. First day out. <laughs> Listen, bro, we were killed by our injuries, man. The guy with the one brow, right? The he was brow. Yeah, he, he was, was hurt, man. The yeah. guy with the one brow. Yeah, Anthony Davis. I call bro. him Brow Man. Yeah, <laughs> hey, but, hey, bro hey, man, but, Brown man. I give it to the Knicks, man. No one expected them to do anything. And nah. they had, they had a that was a good year. story. It was, but they didn't they didn't get anywhere. But no one expected them to even make the playoffs. And the fact that they did that, their coach right. just got named Coach of the Year. Yeah, Coach of the Year. Yes, Tom Thibodeau. That's yeah. I just hope they don't split that team up. So who's that, good? Oh yeah, yeah. But they, I hope they don't split. Yeah, that the team Knicks up. does. They fucked do up the, shit they like dismantled that, right? the fucking team. Yeah, but I think they did they it got with Lynn. They got they had. Yeah, they did. They had magic. They had Lynn Am I wrong? They had magic there. They let him walk. They didn't want. They didn't want to let magic go. Yes. Yo, fam, yeah. they had Asian magic then. Yeah. Asian. And they let him go. Just, and it was never the same. It was yeah. never the same. They let go of him and Carmelo. Where's Lin now? He's playing overseas, right? No, nah, he, he was just playing with the... Uh, nah, he's he in like China. He, he, no, he was, but then he signed a two-way contract with the Warriors. He, so he was playing in the G League, and then he, was, he would come up some games. Because there's a lot of Asians in the Bay. That's ticket sales right own. there. I'm he telling you me. right now. I, I read an Are article. You, this mad Asian. I take you serious, I'm man. Yo. If you were in that Golden State, uh, in that Uniform? meeting, if you were yeah. in that meeting oh. with Golden State, yeah. 100% they got Lynn because of Asian ticket sales. He 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 just signed a big shoe deal, too. With who? No, nah, I've seen his with, shoes. Uh, with Lee, Lee Ning. Oh, Lee. Yeah. Dude, that, that company's big. Yeah. Lee Ning is huge. Ning's Wait, big. I'm talking about these budget shoes that he's been selling that yes. are like pink? <laughs> yes, those are the leanings. But they're a big company. They signed to Wayne Wade, one of the biggest stars. But, yeah. Wait, what company is this? Lean, lean, I can't ever say Leaning. That. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a known What shoe do we know from them? None. 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 Oh. But they're <laughs> popping. Them shoes look budget as fuck. No, no they definitely look some Payless shit for sure. That shit had like flowers hey, on I, it. I apologize. 
leaning is with Dwayne Wade. His is X Tap, which oh, is X-Tap. another which is another uh, Chinese brand. Don't know who the yeah. fuck X Tap yeah. is, Kirk. That's it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm good. I'm good, son. I'm good. Those hey. those is uh, Hey, but they'll probably sell it over there, man. Nah, man. I don't they know. Said he, got, he reportedly got one of the biggest overseas shoe deals there is. Who? Lin? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Bro, a, Lin, a Lin is deal. love, bro. As much as you love him, a lot of people do love him. You know, China's the the second largest market for basketball in in the world. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bro, Wait, Kobe right. was a fucking I'm telling you right now, <laughs> Golden State that's what they did. I think it's ticket I sales. Be mad I think at that. I, I think be it's mad at jersey that sales. Yeah, I think it's a lot of shit. I think it's a lot of merch they're gonna move. Yeah, with Lynn and Golden State. I'm okay. not mad at that. I'm move. talking on my ass. I'm not being serious. Here. <laughs> I know you are. I know. I don't know, bro. But this is crazy because this is the first time since 1998 that the finals will not see either the Lakers, the Spurs, the Heat, or the Golden State Warriors. So who's who's? I heard the Bucks, Milwaukee's. That's his that choice. Team. That's his yeah, choice. That's, that's who I'm rolling with. And the I'm, Nets? Going, I'm going with the Nets. The Nets and the, and the Bucks, are, they're, they're battling it out right now, but I'm going with the Nets. Is there anything? I feel like a Brooklyn Nets fan is a real piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm wondering. Like they like new? They like new fans? Yeah. Like they're, you know, like, I'll tell you why they're I'm like, like fake New Yorkers. Yeah. I only like Am the, I wrong? I only like the Nets because of Kyrie Irving. That's the only reason why. No, I'm but wrong. like explain to me the Brooklyn Nets fan. Do you, you guys probably don't know. I got to talk to New Yorker about yeah, this. You, I feel like that's like a new, that's New York talk. I no. feel like a Brooklyn Nets fan is like a dude that just moved to Brooklyn and just went. Because yeah, yeah, they was, a few years. When did they move to, to uh, Brooklyn? Uh, 2012. Yeah, so I feel like they just knew, but it's like it's cool to be a Brooklyn Nets fan right now. Because I feel like a real like. New Jersey Nets fan don't fuck with doesn't fuck with it. Yeah. They don't fuck with the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> no, right? I, yeah, I think there's there's a big division between that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yo, let me know, man. Let me know. All my New York motherfuckers, like, let me know. I gotta find out about that. Yeah, I'm curious too because I feel because like, I feel like even if the Nets Brooklyn Nets won, the Jersey folks will not claim. No, it. I don't know if the city will rally for the for them. Like oh that. no, not the way they will for the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? Wait, nah. then he's talking about the Nets. Yeah, the Jersey. Oh, the Nets. Oh, okay, and Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if the Nets won, uh-huh. I don't know if New York would rally for them. Right. Oh, okay. Right, right, yeah, yeah. No, right, I don't right, think so. Right. It's like the Mets winning. Right? Nah, but there's still uh, Mets fans in New York. No, but it's not more. It's not like the Yankee fans. It's like, like the L, it's like L.A. If the Clippers fam, won. like, I don't know a Brooklyn Nets fan. I don't know one Brooklyn Nets fan in New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I, I kind of see that. You you feel me? Yeah. Like, but it's the I, same like thing you, with the Lakers. If you're from LA, you know some LA Clipper fans, right? Yeah. A few. You know some. Very, obviously, it's, you know Laker rare. fans, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. But it's like I, I'm from New York. I don't know one Brooklyn Nets fan. Yeah. You like, can't nobody say they've been riding with the Nets, the Brooklyn Nets, since they came to Brooklyn, because they was bad for a long time. They were really bad, bro. They didn't have a good team. Yeah. Lynn was on there though. They was. That must have been when they was doing all right. That was. That was like. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same year. <laughs> that was dreadlock Lynn. That's oh, he, had, he, that was he had the dread, Mohawk dreadlocks. Dread yeah, man, I like that Lin. He was swaggy. Shout out to Lin, man. Hey, yo, speaking of um, Asian, <laughs> Asian swag, Asian footwear. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yo, you on fire today, baby? Yo, my segways, is, is, on, is, is on fire. It's cracked today. Wow, wow. Lin's only thirty two years old. That's crazy. He Lin? seems older. He seems older. He see, he just been around for a long. He time. He just has like a washed energy about him sometimes. Like when he's in interviews. He's just very monotone and just kind of like. No, nah, I just feel he's like not very I feel like he's been through a lot. Yeah. Like I feel like the end, like the I don't know, like the NBA. Uh, like what the, do you call it? The, the industry. Or, the analysts? Yeah. Probably didn't like he. It, no, I'm just saying. Like, let me say it again. I feel like the NBA, the business of how, fuck. I feel like how the NBA handles business. Uh huh. And I feel like they really fucked with Lynn. Yeah. Like he's really. Like I don't know. Every time I, he's in an interview, he looks like he's like about to cry. I think when he first came out, they made it sound like he was fresh off the boat. Like, oh my god, look at our star that we got off the bench, and they never really highlighted him correctly. Even when he was doing interviews, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about even how like how he gets traded. Yeah, like how like the Knicks got rid of him, and they just treat him like he's not a commodity. Yeah, and I think like even to this day, like he be going into the arenas and like security be like. You're not allowed in. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. They kind of made him seem like, like they didn't give him his props. They kind of made him seem like, like, oh, this is our new fucking attraction for this week. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was. I know what he did when he came out. He was a big impact. So when felt. is he going to start with the Golden State next season? 
He Possibly, he, yeah. he signed that deal at the end of this season, but he'll be there next season. Dude, Golden State yeah. might be crazy next year. Yeah, they're gonna be healthy, and it's gonna be scary. I want to see these. I want to see these kicks. Oh yeah! Shout what? to Sandal Boys. Shout what does out. it say? Jinro. Jinro is a Korean uh, rice wine. It's uh-huh. fucking delicious. It's, a so, it's called soju. Jinro is like the Ciroc of rice wine. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. say that. It's called soju though. Yeah. Soju. But anyone who knows soju, it's Korean. It's known. But it's a collab they sent me. My favorite. Uh, my favorite uh, flavor is it? the peach one. The peach one. Oh yeah! If you ever get to try oh, it, peach soju, because you've been drinking it at um, best friend. At best friend. Okay. By the dozens. Yeah. Man. Taking advantage of that food and beverage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, they got a collab. Thanks for That's the sandals. But I wanted to let y'all know that they're releasing shit and they've been they've been killing it recently. I think they had like a recent collab with KFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They they've been doing like really cool shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Keep but it on them. Yeah. But they yo, they I think they're gonna be available at crossover too. Yeah. Here oh, in dope. Vegas. So if you're in Vegas at the Cosmopolitan and you want sandal boys, go to crossover, go ask for Jordan. Yeah, right. Shout to Jordan. Shout to Jordan and Dome. Yeah, need those sandals before you step into the pool. To yeah, the yeah. Day parties, and they're cool. They have dope colorways, so they, yeah. they, they have a large selection to go. Yeah, I want to give out. them a shout. They they were just in town recently, so I wanted to give them a shout. Yeah, uh, shout to Andrew, Ray, and Ryan. Shout to them and Mikey. Mikey, you still my homie. Mikey, shout to Mikey. <laughs> shout to Fran Alacious too, even though shout to Fran. <laughs> okay, <No. laughs> <laughs> Mel. But Sandal Boys is at crossover. So if you're in Vegas, stop by crossover right next to the market. Right yeah, next yeah. to Marquee at Cosmopolitan. Yeah. Ask um, for Jordan and don't tell them that Crook sent you, man. Crook and Jamie. Yeah. No, no, just Crook. Hey yo, real quick, real quick I want to plug DJ Audio One's Twitch page um, Twitch.tv slash DJ Audio One All the homies have been holding his page down While he's been in recovery All the DJs rallied together They've been keeping his page going DJing on his Twitch uh, Making sure that he's getting some money in Because homeboy's been in recovery And we want him to focus on his health But not also worry about paying them hospital bills and paying for all his expenses while he's, uh, you know, recovering. Um, but the best way to really donate is to uh, send him money directly. And I want to put his PayPal up. Um, so make sure you can, you know, send him $2, $5, $10, $20, whatever you can, man. Anything helps. Um, he's one of us. He's one of, he's a DJ. And this shit could happen to any one of us and, and, um, we we gotta we gotta look out for each other. All right, man. So I I think that's it, right? I yeah. think that's it. We're that's here now, Mark. ESPN five for you guys today. <laughs> this is probably maybe a, one of our worst episodes. No, it's no. not. It's fuck. different. I think it, it started is. off rocky as shit. We was we was talking like off camera talk. Yeah, we, we got too comfortable. This is pretty bad. We'll come back with a better one next week. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. <laughs> But <laughs> I can't even think of it. All right, man. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs> if you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace. <laughs>